gosh, I hate when the camera cuts out. Back to where we were talking, planting the seed. Not sure quite where it cut out. So I'm just gonna talk about planting the seed again. Okay, setting it and forgetting it. So you planted the seed with the force and the form. Express all the emotion and everything. You gotta set it and forget it. Like I said, the conscious mind gets in the way because the subconscious mind cannot operate and shine through and cue in your awareness to anything if your conscious mind is controlling is in control which is the the normal state for more like you cannot be thinking about the manifestation if you want it to happen it can only happen when you finally when the conscious mind finally turns off enough to let the subconscious mind shine through and lead you to that uh, object of desire okay the subconscious mind will lead you to it the subconscious mind is all-knowing. It's connected to the, the universal consciousness. Like, do, do you understand how powerful the subconscious mind is? Like, it, it is... The conscious mind is the tip of the iceberg. Most people only use the tip of the iceberg when 99% of the mind, of the, po the power of your mind is in the subconscious infinite intelligence knowing of all like I would even go so, as far to say as genetic memories and past lifetimes and essentially all the information of the universe could be accessed through the subconscious it could be accessed as using the subconscious as a portal as a gateway to unity consciousness so that's just a little spiel on getting the conscious mind out of the way, setting it and forgetting it, planting seeds. Like a, a farmer doesn't plant seeds and then watch them sprout. And then every day comes out and watches them grow and flower and grow the corn or the fruit or whatever. No, the farmer plants the seeds and then he goes plant more seeds over here. And then he goes and harvests the seeds he planted three months ago. This is the same as the magician. Like a Zen Atman. He is constantly planting seeds and harvesting simultaneously. This is the goal. Like magic is not a quick fix for anything. Okay. Manifestation is not a quick fix for anything. If you need money, like right now, magic is not the route to go for you. Especially because if you like urgently need something then your conscious mind is constantly be thinking about this and worrying about it and therefore never allowing it to manifest into your reality but more than that magic is kind of like for instance if I want to run a successful YouTube channel I can't just like do the force and the form manifestation create a whole bunch of sigils and do some rituals for a successful YouTube channel. No, I need to make videos still. I need to connect with people. I need to make good content, but magic will help. If you have opportunities to make money, right? You have paths, many paths that you can think about right now, like ways that money can come to you. Magic will help money come to you and manifest. But if you have nothing set up, then path of least resistance is still going to be very resistant okay if, if you have no, if you have no opportunities to acquire that which you want to manifest it's going to take an enormous amount of energy an enormous like uh until you're adept at this stuff i don't even think it would be possible for you so maybe even doing some magic to create opportunities but what i'm saying is the the practical groundedness comes first right 
magic enhances it. It enhances you. And once you get to a point where you are planting seeds and harvesting simultaneously and constantly, now you are a magician. Now you have control of your subconscious mind, therefore you have control of the paradigm in which you exist within. You have control of all things in your life, how you feel and the people and like, you can control this stuff. Not, not like you can control a pen on a piece of paper, but you, you co, it's like a co-creation of your reality that you're creating with the universal consciousness and your own subconscious connection to the all. Okay. So setting it and forgetting it, very important. Getting the sub, getting the conscious mind out of the way, the analytical mind out of the way, letting the subconscious shine through and lead you to the manifestation. This also, we could go deep into like walking in the spirit, being the passerby, mindfulness. Um, essentially, when you operate in alignment with your true authentic self and you operate in alignment with the universe and your purpose here, things come to you way easier. Like it's, it, I, I couldn't even describe it. Like um, in the, the book, The Alchemist, for instance, if you want something bad enough and you're in alignment with truth and source, your alignment with your own personal legend, the universe will conspire to help you get there. Okay? I've I've realized this in my own life. Like when when you walk in alignment, when you walk in spirit, therefore not letting the conscious mind control you, but in fact you are the master of your own seeds, the master of your own mind. Therefore, not letting all these external situations affect you, not being the victim, and being the controller of your inner state and consciousness and awareness. If you can do this and be in alignment, manifestation comes very easy to you. Especially if you're already doing the meditation, if you have daily meditation practice, a strong visualization in mind. Like, I mean, I've only, like, really been, like, experimenting for three months and have had rapid success, like manifesting exactly $144 that I wrote down before. That's remarkable. So the last note on planting the seeds and going back to like a garden, a gardener analogy, planting the seeds in a fertile garden. What is the garden? The garden is your mind and environment. Okay, so you want to have a very fertile garden for when you plant your seeds if you want an easy, fast manifestation which you can harvest. Therefore, that garden environmentally must have many gateways and opportunities to uh, to manifest or receive what you seek, okay? If you want money, if you want a girlfriend, you have to be social, right? You have to plant seeds. Like this is what I'm saying about magic and grounding. Like you still have, you have to be social. You have to go and talk to people and put yourself out there. But if you have magic behind you and you're taking the physical steps towards manifestation along with the magical steps it is pure enhancement the harvest will come much sooner and easier okay it's because your subconscious mind has been told what you want universal consciousness knows what you want and is conspiring to deliver that to you and you are walking in spirit with alignment with truth Therefore, your subconscious mind can guide you straight to the manifestation which you seek. This is magic, okay? This is how it works. So, planting in a fertile garden. Magic always works 
in the path of least resistance. The path of least resistance. Therefore, by forging many opportunities for the manifestation of anything, if you have many opportunities to make money, for instance, online and me, I have like, I could make money um, doing like digital marketing. I also have like websites and passive income things set up. So I have gateways in which money can flow to me. Usually these things don't generate very much, right? But if I do magic behind it and put in a little bit of time and work, all of a sudden the right people will visit my website or like things will happen, right? I will co-create with reality as the master of my own seas, okay? So the manifestation will follow the path of least resistance. So if you have many open like gateways, which you have created physically, therefore magic will manifest much easier, okay? So cultivate opportunity, still be grounded and like the practicality of like what you can do physically right now today to initiate this and have magic behind you and you become a superstar, okay? You, you can accomplish your wildest dreams if you put your mind to it, period, period. Okay, let's go into form and force because form and force are the two vital functions of doing any manifestation. There's many things that can block the manifestation from happening, such as planting seeds in an unfertile garden, letting the conscious mind get in the way. But if you can't put the right amount of energy into a very clear form, which blasts this through to your subconscious mind and unity consciousness, if you can't do that well, well shit, the, the blockages after that aren't, aren't <laughs> they're of no significance. So working on developing your ability to create what you want in your mind, the form. A, d a daily meditation practice is almost crucial here. It's, it's essential. Um, unless you're living a very, you know, in tune spiritual lifestyle already. Uh, for the vast majority of us though, a, a daily meditation practice to teach us mindfulness, teach us awareness of consciousness, our conscious mind, our subconscious mind, and reality. Um, and also like turning down, like if that conscious mind is constantly running, there's inertia there, okay? The conscious mind has inertia. And we've all felt this. It's hard to slow it down and stop it sometimes, right? And shit, if you go to sleep with your conscious mind still running, it's gonna run straight through the night. You're gonna wake up tired like everyone else. So developing a daily meditation practice for mindfulness, but like not only mindfulness though is like for meditation has many different components and aspects. Like most of my meditations involve intense visualization and imagination techniques, right? Well, if I'm developing like meditation, it's gonna develop your mindfulness. It's gonna develop your, your clarity of thought it's going to develop your perspective of of the world and self. It's going to get you in tune with spirit, and it'll help you with visualization, imagination, and playfulness. All these things are absolutely critical to any type of manifestation. So daily meditation practice would be key. <laughs> Secondly, a powerful visualization and imagination. Uh, we can, we all have the ability to use our imagination and visualization, but due to a world of, uh, God, this, this, this culture does not really propagate any type of visualization or imagination. We like TV and stimulus and words and like we, uh, the, basically our imagination has been slaughtered and it, it is, that is a disaster because if you can't harness and use the ability of imagination and visualization, 
therefore you're only thinking in words, and words are a trap. So, like, your mind is boxed up heavy. So, I, to develop your visualization, which can always be improved, like, I will improve my imagination and visual, visualization till the day I die. Um, to develop it, there's a couple things you can do that are very easy. Let's see what I write down here. Oh, reading fantasy books, right? I love fantasy books. I used to read like literally two of them a week for like years. And I think that was one of the major uh, components that contributed to the, like my artwork and my ability to use my imagination still is, is because I read fantasy books, which constantly built full, incredibly detailed worlds with characters, religions, people, and societies and its own physical laws, like hundreds of different worlds that I lived within. And so I, I really developed that ability to use the imagination and visualization. Beyond that, uh, try and do like energy work and different visualizations. You can get really good guided meditations on YouTube with like great visualization techniques. And like the difference between visualization and imagination, in my mind anyway, is visualization is like looking at a something you create in your mind from like a third party perspective. Imagination is existing within it. It's like the first person where you are actually feeling the full experience and that is far more powerful. So, uh, for instance, doing a meditation and imagining yourself on top of a mountain, right? Or like on, in the canopy of the Amazon rainforest with the waterfall on your right side, the birds chirping on your left, the sun, the heat that you feel, the mist spraying up from the bottom of the falls, okay, the green, and really building this in your mind and putting yourself there. And, so, and I like it's actually very fun, and you're gonna find this to be really like relaxing, a great escape. Uh, that just some keys to build your imagination. Let's see one other thing. And then, uh, of course, form. When you when we're talking about form, the the intention of what you want to manifest a very clear visualization with full sensory input is key second key is symbols right we have many symbols which we don't even think about associated with everything money for instance green the dollar sign uh like a coin um yeah there, like everything has so many, so many, so much symbolism attached to it, and like really incorporating that into your visualization helps with uh, the form. The last point here with the form is you need a very clear intention because you have to you have to communicate one thing that you want and drive it with tons of force straight into the subconscious mind and unity consciousness. So a very clear intention in the affirmative, in the positive. Okay. If you're not already thinking with a positive mental outlook, please start, start cultivating that. That'll change your life far more than any magic could. Like, for instance, like, a positive mental outlook is, is saying, uh, I want more energy. A negative mental outlook would be saying, I don't want to be tired. Or, I don't want to be sick. Or, I hate when the toilet clogs. Okay. The subconscious mind cannot differentiate between good or bad, negative or positive, what you don't want and what you do want. It only takes the subject of what you are driving into it and communicating to it. So if you're, if you're telling your subconscious mind, plug toilet, plug toilet, plug... That's what's going to fucking happen. If you're constantly telling your subconscious mind, I don't want to be sick, I don't want to be sick, I don't want to be sick, you'll get sick. How about, I want to be healthy, I am vibrant, I am exuberating energy. That's a little bit more positive, okay? And like, 
So a clear, affirmative intention, a full sensory visualization with symbolism creates a very strong form, okay? So build this in your mind for a couple minutes until you're satisfied with your results. Um, and this will become much easier as, as you continue to do this and harness your visualization. Next, the force behind it. So as I said, you must put the same amount of energy into it that you will receive when the manifestation occurs. And in fact, you must put the same, you have to put the energy of, you, you have to put in the energy as if the manifestation happened right now, as if you already had it. How would that make you feel? If you're trying to manifest $1,000, how, it, if that suddenly appeared in your bank account right now, how would you feel? What kind of emotions, excitement? Maybe you'd be pissed off. <laughs> if you're pissed off, shit, you could, like, any force works, any energy works, but if you're pissed off and you put that kind of energy into manifesting money, well, when that money does manifest for you, you're probably going to be, it's, it's probably going to be in circumstances that piss you off, <laughs> like you get in a car crash. Okay, so the, the force that you put into it has to be the energy that you would, you want to feel and experience and that you would feel when you manifest the object of, of desire. Okay, so in order to harness and channel and charge that much energy into the form, you have to, uh, essentially you need good emotional intelligence. You have to know thyself. You have to know how to amp yourself up, get excited, like get passionate, get energetic, like do different. Like you have, uh, if you are into like raising your vibration and uh, doing different things to make you feel in certain ways, then this is going to be easier for you because you have to invoke a certain energy, a certain emotion and feeling throughout your whole body, channel it throughout your whole being into every cell of your body with while visualizing that manifestation. Like, so... It's kind of difficult. It's not as hard as it sounds. I just make it sound kind of hard. Um, last two points here with the force is drama. So if you're trying to manifest $5,000 instantly into your bank account and you got the path and you got some opportunities in which that could actually happen, you have to add the drama as if like bang, it happened right now, you'd be jumping up and down, waving your arms around, acting stupid, you'd probably, like, drive to the store and buy a diamond ring for your wife, <laughs> like, you know what I mean, like, you, you have to, it's, it's not just, in, it's not just a mind thing, it's not engaging just the mind, you have to engage the entire being, the body, your subtle energy, your mind, the passion, the feeling, the, the excitement, like, if you're trying to manifest money, put on that, I, can't, I don't know the name of the song, but there's a super good song about like getting money in it. it. It gets you hyped up and like it gets you on your grind to get money. And like that would be a very good way to invoke and direct force into a form, money. This is like, we're, we're constantly doing magic. We are constantly playing with our subconscious mind without noticing it. Like if the music you listen to constantly, if you if you listen to rap music that's all about like smacking bitches and getting money and doing drugs a year from now after listening to that shit every day that's what you're going to think about and want to do because your paradigm has accepted that programming your subconscious mind has been programmed by everything you consume it's a little side tangent but So, yeah, surging energy throughout every part of your being. 
for the force. Last point here. Oh, two points here. Be you, uh, beyond just like the mind, the body, and the, the energy for the force, also invoke it with words and a sigil. Go look up how to make a sigil and how to charge a sigil. Charging a sigil is the same thing that we're talking about here with force. I don't want to go into this. Um, so the spoken word is very powerful. The spoken word is very powerful, okay? Especially if you can speak that word with full intensity, with full energy, with full focus, clarity of thought, and knowing that every word, like putting your entire being into that vibration and word, and repeat it in the affirmative three times. I have $1,000, or... I will manifest $1,000 and repeat that. And, but like, you, you do the invocation, the, you, uh, like you vocalize this after you've already did the visualization, you have the picture in your mind, you have the energy flowing through every ounce of your body as if you already received that manifestation and then you invoke it and drive all the energy into the words. If you create a sigil, you drive all the energy into the sigil and charge it, right? And then you burn the sigil or forget about it, go hide it, and just like words, they dissipate, they disappear, okay? And then you set it and forget it, plant the seed, go on, plant more seeds. Oh, and last point on, on force, the drama, like I was saying, and uh, this is going to reiterate on this point, is the playfulness of a child. Just like you're playing cops and robbers in your backyard with all your friends, you're seven years old, you have to, like, yeah, get into that, be weird, be crazy, be stupid, don't, don't conform to anything, any programming from society, like, be weird, be far from normal. See, because when you can do that, when you can get in this kind of like giggly state using your imagination and just kind of saying, fuck it, like, I'm just going to be weird for a little bit. That instantly bypasses the conscious mind because the conscious mind is going to be like, why are you doing this shit? You know, like <laughs> the, the serious analytical, like, if you can just be a little kid for five minutes, it's going to be enormously impactful for your manifestation. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, let's see. Okay, I'm going to go through some notes on the subconscious manifestation and, like, things that will hinder you and just some, like, just a general path that for, for guidance here and a further understanding of what the subconscious mind is how it operates and what is magic so all of what we just talked about the force and the form and the drama and the energy it's all about creating a line of communication directly to your subconscious mind Bypassing the conscious mind, programming the subconscious mind with what you want, and then turning off the conscious mind, being mindful, and allowing spirit, allowing the subconscious mind to guide you.